Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch and welcome today to my review of the $45 Grand Seiko. Kind of. You're not going to get a Grand Seiko for less than $50, but in the form of this Chamery, you get something that looks quite a lot like both vintage and modern GSs. And frankly, you get something that looks a damn sight better than just about every other sub $50 watch I have reviewed. Now, I included it already in my top 10 AliExpress sale video earlier on in the week, but I said I would come back with a full review. So if you were interested, you could take advantage of the best price. And I found a better price than even I paid. Sucks to be me. It's great to be you. That price is $42.83. That's the link I'll leave in the description of the video. Now, you do not get perfection for less than a 50. The leather strap on this one is particularly heinous, but it's almost like the designers knew that because they made it quick release, meaning we could dump it without difficulty. Let's flip the camera and have a look at the watch. Okay, let's get on with it. It's a simple watch. For goodness sake, Jody, don't take all day. Gotta say though, the packaging is all right. I paid 45 or thereabouts for this one a couple of weeks ago, and yeah, this is decent. All you're really requiring of the packaging at this price is to get the watch to you in one piece, and this more than does that. However, it also provided me with some mixed messaging. You pop the top and there's the watch. Let's get it off the cushion and set it to one side just for now. But I was a little bit confused by that. Miltado, never heard of them, not what I ordered. International guarantee, two year guarantee, picture of an entirely different watch, uh, no model, no serial, no date of purchase. I don't think I'm gonna have any issues with this one because it's got a super reliable movement in the back of it. So it's not a Miltado, it's a Chamery, Chamery, Chamerai. What do we think of the brand name? I'll give that, a five out of 10. It's not something that would put me off buying the watch. If you wanna see 10 brand names so bad, I will never feature them on this channel. Watch this video. I'll leave a link to it in the top corner of the screen right now. Yeah, it's okay, not particularly punchy, but inoffensive, I guess. So I will run you through the dimensions and specifications of this Shamurai, and then if I'm gonna complain about the stock strap in the intro of the video, then the least I can do is do a bit of a strap fashion show today. I'll put it on four or five other 20 mil lug wedge straps that I've got in the house that take this design to the next level. Talking of design, the credit for this one does not go to Chamery, it goes to Grand Seiko, oddly enough. This is pretty much as close as you'll get to a 44GS case. Now, the 44GS case Grand Seiko was from the 60s. However, they started re-releasing models with basically the same case, but with modern sizing in about 2013. And as you can see, they have expanded that range considerably since then, a variety of different colors and so on, all featuring that signature case. And it is a beautiful case. Expensive on the Grand Seiko is not quite so expensive on this one though, as discussed, 42 bucks and change. In terms of dimensions, I measure this one at 39.8 mil in diameter, so just a smidge under 40, therefore, bang on 10 mil, one centimeter thick, with a 46 mil lug tip to lug tip. 20 mil gap between the lugs today, which is great. Easy strap changes, therefore. As supplied on the Chinese toad leather version, though, this one weighs in at 58 grams on the nose. Flat sapphire covers the dial today. Now, Chamery claims some anti-reflective undercoating. My studio lights claim different. Screw down crown, 50 meters of water resistance. Not necessarily needing a screw down crown on a watch like this, but I'm not gonna complain about it when they provide it. And have a look at that second hand, the sharp eyed amongst you may have spotted already. It's not automatic, it's quartz. It's a Seiko VK31 for tick quartz. Nice simple screw on stainless steel case back, couple of mixed finishes there and the Chamery name in the center. Do you know what? I've never seen a VK31. Let's pop the back off of this and have a look. Yeah, well, my curiosity has now been satisfied. I don't need to do that again. Big plastic movement holder, which is just what you'd expect at the price. Two dual battery, swap the battery over yourself every couple of years. These things are just so cheap to maintain. Plus or minus 15 seconds per month average accuracy because it's quartz. Case finish is very simple. It is high polished throughout. It's actually really nicely integrated the bezel and the mid case 
almost seem like they are part of the same piece of metal, but they're not, they're two. They're just very nicely done. But really, it's not the case finish we're interested in today, it's the case shape. It's such a lovely, elegant profile from the top, or from the side. But do be warned, not a lot of curvature, not a lot of downturn from those lugs. So it may only be a 46, but it does wear a little larger than that. Nice little angled chamfered edges in towards the lugs as well there. Unsigned crown, but it's a decent size. It's about five and a half millimeters. So no problems adjusting this one when you need to. Not that you'll need to all that often. All right, dial and hands. But before we even talk about the dial of this watch, there are two other versions, two different dials in the same case that we need to talk about as well, I think. Yeah, these two are also available on AliExpress. The cheapest price I could find them for though was $60 each. There's a blue one, very pale ice blue, I would say, with almost a wave pattern on it. And a pale white one, what they call rather cheekily a silver birch. Again, another blatant nod in the direction of Grand Seiko. I'm not sure whether it's worth spending nearly 50% more to get these two dials. I was perfectly happy with mine, the cheap one, which they'd simply refer to as the yellow dial. Although I think yellow might be a bit of a misnomer. It's not really all that yellow. It's more a kind of parchment or cream color, I would say myself. Super, super simple. Applied high polished silver baton, indices double at the 12 single batons everywhere else. There's a printed minute track around the outer edge. We have high polished silver beveled dauphine hands, and we have probably the least blue, blue second hand I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it's pale blue. It's not really in your face. Maybe they could have had it a little bit more pop if it had been a brighter shade of blue, but that's what they decided to do. Shamurai just printed on and quartz just printed on. That's it, really, really simple, really rather elegant, kind of minimalist, I quite like it. One thing I don't like though is the strap. Do you know, post-nuclear holocaust, the world is gonna be overrun by cockroaches and these leather straps. I don't think anything is gonna be able to kill these. I'm not quite sure what they're actually made of. It says genuine leather, but I always have my suspicions. Kind of semi-embossed at the top, it's that kind of faux croc leather style. The hardware isn't awful, but it also isn't branded, so I have got no problem dumping it for something else. Twin retainers, at least they made a quick release. It's almost, like I said, like they know we're gonna dump it for something better. That's it on the supplied strap anyway. I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference. It sits flat, but you can see what I mean about those lugs. They're just beginning to gap. I'm just beginning to get a little bit of air underneath, which wouldn't normally happen with a 46 mil lug to lug if the lugs themselves were curved. I don't think the strap helps, to be honest. I've tried to break this one in manually, but it's just not for breaking in. It's for the bin. Look, you can keep the same level of formality, but up the level of quality by swapping a black full croc for a black full croc, but just from a better brand, better quality, nice, softer, comfortable on wrist, and a bit more taper as well for extra elegance. But I'd be opting for something a little more casual myself. I do like brown. I think it goes nicely with that kind of cream color dial. That's something slightly paler and slightly thicker. There's not a lot going on with the dial and it is a fairly neutral color, so you gotta be careful not to overpower this one, I think. Keep it slightly neutral in terms of strap coloring. For example, maybe I think that's a bit too much now. I think there's a bit too much going on with the strap and it actually detracts from the dial rather than enhances the dial. But each to their own, it'll depend what you've got in the house, I suppose. And there you are, if you're a NATO's with everything type of person, then that's what it looks like on a NATO strap. Double pass from moose straps. Again, keep it neutral, keep it simple, allow the dial to do its thing. But again, do bear in mind, fairly flat, you're gonna get a little bit of gappage at either end. All right, moans and niggles. I'm not gonna complain about the strap again, having done so about six times over the course of the last 10 minutes. Zero originality. It's a straight up Grand Seiko lookalike. Zero brand identity or brand recognition. I hadn't heard of Chamery until a couple of weeks ago and I'm not sure how many of you had either. And it's a little bit bland. You know, it maybe could do with a bit more oomph. Perhaps they could have done something else in terms of the logo scripting and so on. And if you want more character on the dial in terms of dial surfacing and coloration, they're charging you nearly $20 more for the privilege. But that is a short complaint list today. It's a really, really lovely looking watch. $42 and change, I can't remember the last time I bought something for so little money that looked this nice.
So there you have it. You know I love complaining, but what's to complain about today when a watch looks this good, has these specs and costs this little money. If you don't fancy this one, but you're determined to only spend a 50, it's really got to be the Canison C1032 or the Guanchin GJ16034. Thanks for making it to the end. I'll see you again in the next one.